Catching sight of monkeys along the Merong River is becoming a rare occurrence these days. Not because the river traffic is noisy, but because deforestation is depleting the number of trees, the monkeys' habitat. It's estimated that only 30% of South Sumatra province is still covered by trees. This new palm oil plantation was financed by the sale of timber and approved by the Indonesian government. In other words, it was all above board. But over 80% of the forest was logged illegally. Those responsible get about 20 euros for a cubic meter of wood. <laughs> We ask this man if he knows that it's illegal to cut down trees here and if he's afraid the police will arrest him. He says, of course he's afraid, but he laughs. <laughs> Everyone here knows the police can be bribed. We see dozens of rafts in the tributaries of the Morong while traveling with members of a German-Indonesian sustainable forest management project. Solichin has been protesting against deforestation for years. The illegal loggers have told him that the crew of this patrol boat is willing to turn a blind eye in exchange for a payment of around 250 euros when the rafts pass by, loaded with timber from the forest. They said that once the tree trunks have been loaded, it's impossible to tell whether or not they were felled legally. The system is, uh, you know, a little bit corrupt. So you need uh, yeah, to reform the system and to change the people. This part of the forest is exceptional. It's the last peat forest in South Sumatra. The trees grow in peat soil, which easily catches fire once the forest has been cleared. There was a major fire here last September. So this is the peat soil, which is partly burned. So this is very bad and causing huge emissions. But this is already dried out and uh, they call it uh, irreversible. Uh, dried. We enter a marshy area of the forest. Solichin wants to show us the area that the Indonesian government has allocated to the German Indonesian Forest Management Project. The going is tough with high humidity and temperatures reaching 35 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Solichin studied forestry in Freiburg, Germany. He returned to Indonesia to try and put a stop to deforestation and save what's left of the forest. Since the early 1950s, an area of rainforest twice the size of Germany has been lost. Solichin and his colleagues take soil samples and measure the peat to see how deep it is. Here, it's six meters ten. The samples reveal the carbon content of the soil. 10 centimeters. So, if we know how much carbon we have and how much carbon uh, potentially uh, reduced due to fires, illegal logging, or dry notch, then we can calculate how much uh, carbon we can save. Then later on, we can uh, sell it as a carbon credit. This carbon credit could be sold to large industrial companies trying to reduce their CO2 emissions and prove their contribution to saving the forest. The project is an experiment in credit trading. The stipulation is that trees like this one are protected. It could be 100 years if we save it. So it could be bigger and even could be two meters. Are you able to save it? Hopefully, that's what we like to achieve here. 
It's precious wood for the loggers, huh? Eh? Exactly, yes. But that's why this is a big challenge for us. Uh, how we can stop uh, illegal loggers to, to get in here and to cut this tree. Solid Chain's workers include local men. They take advantage of their stay in the forest to gather some seedlings. The forest management project has provided them with a new source of income. I used to be an illegal logger and earn good money. But then I realized that a tree can be cut down in an hour, but it takes many decades to grow back. They bring the seedlings back to their village. Bina Desa, with a population of 150, is at the very center of the project, which has received 1.4 million euros from the German Environment Ministry. The village is home to a nursery that is designed to help save the forest and give the local people new sources of income. They collect the seedlings from the forest and put it in the poly bag like this. And yeah, they keep uh, nurture the, the seedlings. And if uh, the seedlings is in three months can survive, then we pay how much seedlings uh, survive, survive. This is how they earn money. The villagers then plant the seedlings in the designated area of the forest. The project covers 24,000 hectares. But that's not really a large area compared to the millions of hectares of tropical rainforest still said to exist in Indonesia, where, if you're lucky, you can still spot some monkeys. <laughs> 